the Sabbath, God's people. We heartily welcome you to God's presence today, and we begin to this service as we remain seated while we take the song, Don't Forget the Sabbath, SDH 388. Happy, happy Sabbath. We thank God so much for today. It's a great joy and a privilege that we are here together as one family once again to worship under his feet. And I also want to welcome our online viewers joining us today for the service. You're also welcome. And I pray that today's service will not just be um, an ordinary service to every, anyone here, but will be a blessing to each and every one of us here. Amen. So please let's pray. Divine Father, we are so grateful for this Sabbath. We thank you so much that you continue to bless us in diverse ways. We thank you for the whole week, and we thank you for the many blessings you shower on us. We thank you once again for the Sabbath. We pray that it will continue to be a blessing to us. Help us to keep learning about you and be a blessing to all those around us. In Jesus' name, amen.
Okay, we will proceed with today's service as we sing to the glory of God and for the blessings of mankind. We would sing three set of songs, all from the Seventh Day Adventist hymnal, and they will be SDH 430, SDH 560, and 490. This time we will sing while standing on our feet, and God bless us as we sing to His glory. 430 is the first song we will be doing. Let us rise as we sing. Christ and the appeal is for us to be a part of the work that God has called us to do on this part of eternity. Our next song is from SDH 560. Let all things now living sing because you have life and breath in your nostril. Let all things now living SDH 560.
Only the living can praise God. And because we have breath in us, we are able to praise God. We sing our last song for this session from the seven hundred eight hymnal, still 490. Jesus, lover of my soul. Jesus, lover of my soul. Father, what's in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for wealth. And thank you for the safety that we have in you. Thank you because when we look at ourselves, we do not see how we have managed to come thus far. But when we look at you, we do not see how we cannot even get to the desired future that you have in stock for us. And that's why we have come this morning with our hearts full of thanksgiving, knowing that you released this. We are grateful 
that we can stand tall before you today with our heart in total submission to you for everything that you have done, for holding the stars, the planets in their various orbits, for showing to us that very much, regardless of all that is happening on this part of eternity, you are still very much in charge. And for all of this, we say thank you. We thank you because no matter how pressing, no matter how difficult, no matter how, how the challenges that we are currently confronted with may appear, you still give us the grace to forge ahead. For we know that when the burdens grow greater, you even give more grace. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We thank you for the peace that we have in our Jerusalem. Because if we don't have the peace that we enjoy right now, we're not even able to gather to worship. And we're not ignorant of this, Father. So we thank you for keeping Germany in peace. Thank you for keeping Freydensau in peace. Thank you for the ability to still gather together as one big happy family. Thank you for the church here in Freydensau. And thank you for those who take time to worship with us online. Thank you because regardless of our physical limitation, you are limitless. You are everywhere at the same time, working your mighty hands in the life of people far and near. And for this, Lord, we are grateful. Lord, if we begin to thank you for all that you are and for all that you do for us, from morning till night will not be enough. But Lord, we just want to say accept our thanksgiving this morning. We are sinners in need of your grace. We know that we do not have the merit to stand before your throne of grace, but because of what Jesus did and what he's currently doing in the heavenly sanctuary, appropriating his blood on our behalf, we know we can stand on his merit. So, Father, we come just as we are today, and we pray that you please cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. Whatever it is that will stand in the way of you moving freely in our lives today, we pray that you please take it from us. Take the burden of sin from us and let sin no longer have dominion over us. For though we are into the service, we know that you are already here even before we started. You were, you were here waiting for us. And for everyone who has come to your presence this day with one problem or the other, with one burden, or the other, we know burdens are lifted at Calvary. Burdens will be lifted from them today, and they will live better than they came. It's always a special moment when we are gathered like this to worship you in truth and in spirit, in singing and also in the hearing of your word. We commit the one who will be breaking the bread of life unto us this day, that you will fill her with your spirit, she will speak none of our own words, but words from the throne of grace, that it may administer peace in our hearts, and that we will depart to serve, based on how we have been rejuvenated from your word. But as we proceed with the rest of the service, we do not want to forget those who cannot be here physically because of one malady or the other. And those who are watching on YouTube who are sick, people who are in the senior in Heim, struggling with their health, and all of us suffering from mental health and what of you, you are the God who heals. Please, Father, stretch forth your healing hands and do like you always do. You are God who never changes. You've done it in time past. You've raised the dead from the estate and you've given healing to those in dire need of it. You're still the same God and you can still do this even amongst us. So for everyone who is sick, watching online, here in the church, those who cannot make it to church, please, Father, wrath your healing in their lives. And let testimonies be our experience, oh God. We have so much to thank you for. We have so much to appreciate you for. But we pray that in this little way that we have come to show our gratitude to you, please accept them, oh God. And let blessings continually be ours while the praises will go to you. Thank you for answering our prayers this much, for we pray all of these with thanksgiving in our hearts. And let the people of God say, Amen. Amen.
Okay. Now is the time for announcement. I wouldn't know if the elder in charge has additional information to give, but if there is, um, of course, he can always come to provide the announcement that uh, probably I am not able to cover. First and foremost, it is indeed a great pleasure to see everyone in God's presence here today. Uh, we are happy that the church at Fadensau is growing from grace to grace. And then we are always very delighted when we see new faces in the church. Of course, not that we are tired of the old faces. That's why they keep coming. But when we see new faces, we appreciate them dearly, and we always want to specially uh, recognize them amongst us. So if you don't mind, if this is the first time you are worshiping with us here at the International, uh, Friends Our International Church, do you mind just signifying by raising your hand above your head? Fantastic. Great. Amen. Amen. Well, we are glad that you've chosen to worship with us today. Um, normally, it is the custom of um, ours here in this church to give a brief introduction of yourself, where you come from, and maybe why you are here this weekend. But if you don't want to, it's also fine. But if you feel comfortable sharing with us, we don't mind because we are one big happy family. And even when you are not here physically with us, we can always try to reach out and um, see how you're doing and maybe the congregation that you're also worshiping with. So if you don't mind, would you like to tell us where you come from, who you are, and why you are here at Fading South to worship with us this weekend? I have um, a family here in front. Okay, we'll begin from the back, and then we'll come to the front. All right, let's hear you, sir. Yeah. You just tell us your name. Where you Bernardino. Oh, I thought I heard Bernardino. Okay, yes. Bernardino, yeah. So, my wife, um, Daniela, is here. So, our two kids, Kessia and Levi. Great. So, yeah, we wanted just to, to enjoy the, the church here. And, um, yeah, actually, we speak Portuguese. Okay. And German, oh. but today we just want to enjoy. Yeah, obviously, you speak English, too. <laughs> <laughs> Great, great. We, we are glad that you're here with us, and welcome to your children, too, and to your beloved wife. We are always pleased to have you, and every time you're chance, this is also your home away from home, so you're always very much welcome here. Thank you. So, you want to hear from you? Yeah. Talk to us and feel at home, please. Volám se Emily. Okay. Som z Slovakia. Oh, great. Uh, she's Emily, and she's from Slovakia. Fantastic. Okay. Prišli sme pozrieť syna, ktorý tu študuje a sme radi, že sme tu na tejto medzinárodnej bohoslúžbe. She came here to visit our family, my husband's family. Oh, She's a mother-in-law. Oh, great. And um, she came here to visit this international um, chapel here. Fantastic. Som rada, že vás poznávam a že ste takí boží a radosní ľudia plní šťastia a Božieho požehnania. I'm glad uh, I'm here to, uh, between us and uh, I, I see you are so, uh, so happy and full of joy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, we are happy people because we have Jesus in our lives. Regardless of where we come from, we are one happy family. Thank you for being a part of today's worship and I hope you enjoy your time here at Freedom Cell. Do we have any other person worshiping with us for the first time? Okay. So if we do not have any, we know that um, I see regular faces. We want to welcome ourselves with um, a song. Um, Elder, you want to suggest that lovely song you always sing that we welcome ourselves with? Fantastic. So let's greet ourselves. Welcome in the presence of God. Yeah, yeah. You can hear us in and we sing. At least check not less than five persons before we all return back to our seats, okay? And don't shake your friend in church. Go and look for a new face and shake, welcome them. So let's sing together then. Welcome, welcome, how do you do? Welcome, welcome, how do you do? Happy to see you, happy to meet you. Welcome, welcome, how do you do? 
Happy to see you, my friend. Welcome, welcome. What are we seeing again? Welcome, welcome. How do you do? Awesome. Happy to see you. Happy to welcome you. Welcome, welcome. How do you do? Happy to see you, my friend. Welcome, welcome. How do you do? Welcome, welcome, how do you do? Happy to see you, happy to welcome you. Welcome, welcome, how do you do? Happy to see you, my friend. How do you do? Welcome, welcome, how do you do? Happy to see you, happy to meet you, welcome, welcome, happy to see you, my friend. We are really glad that you've taken time to be a part of worship here with us today. May the Lord bless you. May the love that binds us together never be broken. And um, we pray that our rejoicing, our celebration here, will not be limited to just planet Earth. When we get to heaven, this joy, this convivial environment will continue. And by God's grace, no one will be missing. Amen. So the pastor has um, an announcement to give, after which I will share the rest of the announcement and the service will continue. Good morning. Um, this afternoon, there will be a business meeting, what the Germans call Gemeindevollversammlung. It's much shorter in English. Uh, in the Seniorenheim at four o'clock. We will discuss the budget for this year. We will discuss a, um, a motion to think about plans, how to make this room wheelchair accessible, damit man hier auch mit dem Rollstuhl reinkommt, Michi. Das wollen wir heute Nachmittag besprechen. Um, we're going to look at all the dates for on the calendar. And uh, at the end, there will be a, a short session where people can just uh, voice what's on, their, you know, what's, uh, what's on their mind. But the main agenda item will be the budget. Now, it's going to be in German. So all of you who want to brush up on their German, feel free to attend. If you don't speak German that well, let's see if we can rustle up some translation on the spot. Um, but all of you who are members of this church are invited this afternoon at four o'clock. And if you now think, oh man, I really want to discuss the budget, but I'm not a member yet. Here. My membership is in somewhere else. Then feel free to approach Dietmar or myself or Kweku uh, about how to transfer that membership here. So when we next talk about the budget, you can participate as well. Thank you. Let me repeat, we will meet in the Seniorenheim. Yes, repetition is good for the imp deepens the impression. 1600, 4 p.m., Seniorenheim, where they have the Andacht. Thank you very much. That is an invitation from the university pastor. We also want to remind you that just after the service today, we'll be having our potluck as usual, where the, we will eat to the glory of God, and then we will continue with our singing, and then, of course, words of exhortation. Yeah, the elder also has an information to pass across, and just before he comes, while he comes, we want to remind ourselves of our prayer meetings. We know that a church that prays is a church that stays together, and of course, a church that keeps growing together. We want to implore you. It's on Zoom. It's just 30 minutes. Take time, no matter how busy we are, to seek the face of the Lord in prayer not just as individuals, because I know we do that, but even as a church. Let's always come together to seek the face of the Lord. Let's not forget a church that prays together, stays together, and grows together. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Gabriel. Mine is very short. Um, it's about the restructuring that we are doing for the departments. 
So uh, you remember two weeks ago, we had different meetings for the ushery department, the technic uh, department, and all the other departments. Uh, we want to still encourage you, the department you feel comfortable to join, please uh, do join. The technical uh, team, they've started their training already yesterday and another training is happening tomorrow. If you are interested to learn how the microphones here work, the video and everything, you can join them tomorrow at three as well. And the same thing for the ushery department. They need people to help in uh, uh, coordinating and organizing the service. So please feel free, it's not over. You can always join any time you want. God bless you. Hello, everybody. So I'm still missing some kids. They are sitting in the back. I'm still missing some kids. They are sitting in the back. Jana, Tilo. Children's story, come. I need you guys. Super, because today we do a children's story where also the grown-ups, they also have to help. It's going to be an interactive children's story, okay? I need you guys to participate, okay? And the adults as well. My first question, who of you have seen a boat? Raise your hands. A boat? Aha. Uh -huh. Who of you have maybe been on a boat? Uh-huh. And who of you have been on a boat when there was some waves in the ocean or on the sea or wherever you have been? Uh-huh. Were there big waves or small waves? Small waves? Uh-huh. Okay, and where, where was that? In Ghana. Okay, good. In Ghana, there can be very, very, very big waves. The sea can be very rough. And today I tell you a story where you all have to help me to tell the story of Jesus and his friends. So Jesus, he had several friends. How do we also call those friends? How do we call his friends? The seven disciples. The disciples, exactly. So, but we also can call him friends because they were best buddies, yeah? They were always going around with him. And then Jesus wanted to go from one side to the other, but there was a, a big lake. So he used a, a boat, exactly. And some of his friends from Jesus, you know what they were before they were going around with him? They were fishermen. And do you think fishermen, they know things about boats? No. Yes. They're very smart about boats, and they're also smart, very smart about waves. However, so Jesus was in the boat. So I need one Jesus. Who wants to be acting Jesus? I need one Jesus. You guys, otherwise I pick. Okay, you're going to be Jesus, okay? So... We are all in a boat now together. Okay, we are in a boat. So, we were in the boat. So, we were in the boat, and there's a small wind. 
Can I hear the wind from the adults? Shh. Oh, it's very good. Very nice. Oh, how beautiful. And the sun is shining. How nice. But now, look over there. Oh, some dark clouds are coming. Good. And now with dark clouds, what is also coming with dark clouds? Rain. But what is Jesus doing? Because Jesus was so busy before, he's tired. Jesus, yes, Jesus, you have to lay down and sleep. Yes. Shh, good, Jesus is sleeping. Good. And now the clouds are there. And with clouds comes first small rain. Can we snip with fingers? Small rain. Okay. And the rain gets heavier. Oy, oy, oy. And now more heavy. And what is this? It's a very big storm. And what happens if you're in the boat and there's a storm? You, do you sit still like this in the boat? No. no. What and has happened? There's waves, huge ones, and you're like this. And Jesus, what is happening with Jesus? He is sleeping. Jesus is sleeping. Oh, it's a big storm, big storm. And what is happening with the disciples, with his friends? They're what? Oh. Scared. Yeah, they're scared because all the waves are coming. Psh, 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 psh. And they get wet. Yes. And what do they do now? They're going they, to wake Jesus up. What? They're going to wake Jesus Yes, go, go, wake, wake him up. Yes, Jesus, wake up. And now Jesus is awake. And what does Jesus do? Do you remember, Jesus, what you did? What did you do? He said, don't be afraid if, because I'm with you. Yes. And what did he do to the storm? We need a storm. Where's the storm? We need a storm. He, he stopped the waves. And what did he say? Stop the storm. Yes, and the storm was gone and quiet. Shh. And you didn't hear anything anymore. And the sun, see, over there's the sun. The sun is coming up again. And everything was fine. But I think the disciples, his friends, they were quite stomach sick after that journey. I'm pretty sure they were. But they realized we can trust Jesus. Yes, if Jesus is with us, if we are his friends and he is our best friend, we can trust him and he can help us in anything. Okay? So, what we're going to do now is we are back on the beach and we pray now and we say, thank you, Jesus that you are our best friends, okay? And for praying, we use our hands, we fold our hands. Can you try to do that? And close our eyes, because then we can concentrate better. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you are our best friend and that we can be your best friend and that you do miracles in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I would like to invite each one of us to stand as we sing the song, My hope is built on nothing less but Jesus Christ in righteousness. Let us all rise and sing. Bye. 
It is well with my soul. Five three zero, sorry. Five five hundred and thirty. Shall we? 
seated and take out our Bibles. Our scripture reading for today will be taken from Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. And I read, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, and the other cause, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. We thank God once again for this Sabbath, and um, we are so blessed and privileged to have our sister, Hope, going to give us the bread of life for today. So she will join me up stage here. Welcome, Sister Hope. And then what Sister Hope wants from all of us is that as she, pre- as she preaches to us or shares the word of God with us, we all remember her in prayer so that she can give God's word to us. Let us pray. Divine Father in heaven, we are so grateful for today. We thank you for giving us Sister Hope to share your word with us. Father Lord, we pray that you put her aside and use her as a vessel to communicate your word to all of us. Help us to understand the word that she's going to give us today. Let us be a blessing to us in our walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. I am so grateful for this um, opportunity that the church has entrusted with me to come and encourage you in the Lord. I am not a preacher, but I am an encourager. I love encouraging people, and that is what I want to do this um, afternoon. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. And my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. For I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and he delivered me from all my fears. We bless the Lord for his mercies in our lives. Um, The topic of my sermon today is Walk Your Journey with Peace. A journey, I love traveling, but it depends with which means. If you ask me to fly, I'm not always excited because the kind of preparations that you have to go through And then you think of the sky, the turbulence, and all that. It makes my journey anxious. So I would comfortably travel with a train or on road. And we are all on journeys. And my journey is not your journey. If I would ask you... What, what kind of means are you comfortable traveling with? You know, each one has what they're comfortable with and the reason why they would want to travel that way. Um, when Jesus was with his disciples and his time of living was about to come, he said, peace I give to you not as the world gives. He saw that his disciples needed peace. They didn't need any other thing, you know? And so he said, peace I give unto you. And as you walk your earthly journey, 
What I've realized is that peace is very, very important in our journeys. I have three little stories, and I would want to share them quickly, and I would like you to figure out which character would you want to play. There was, there was this lady who grew up in a very beautiful, wealthy family. She got married to a wonderful husband, and they gave birth to eight children. And all these eight children grew up to be successful in their careers. And until 40 years, um, when the firstborn made 40 years, something happened in their family. From that time on, each year she was burying a child. And the death was sudden until the last born who only just got mad. And the husband in between got a stroke. So she had a good beginning, but her end is just as I've told you. That is one character. The second character is a girl who grew up as an orphan, struggled living from one family to another, Everyone was supporting here and there with tuition, and she was able to make it to the university. Then afterwards, she gets a job, she gets married, and three years into marriage, the husband suddenly passes away, and she gets her child back into the cycle of being an orphan. Three years later, she gets a stroke, and she was paralyzed, and that is her life. The third one, is also a girl. She grew up in a family where the father was sexually molesting her. And then, each time it would happen, the father would force her to abort, and the last abortion, the uterus came out. But she successfully lived out and went to university, had a career, but she has a very miserable life. So these are three characters. Which role can you play? Who is better than the other? Can you relate to such stories today in our journeys, in our lives? Where you look at someone's story, and you look at your story, and you're like, I think I am better, or I think she's better than me. You know, there are words that Jesus spoke, and I never took them very serious, not until I continued growing. John 16, 33, Jesus said, in this world you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer because I have overcome. So he shows us a journey that won't be easy, but then he assures us that at the end, you will overcome. So he doesn't tell you that as you go through your tribulations, you have to be sad, you know, you have to mama, you have to, to pity yourself, but he says, cheer up because I've overcome. The scripture I, that we read in Hebrews 12 to saying, looking to Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith. As you travel on this journey, the earthly journey, you have to have a focus. You have to have a focus. Otherwise, when you turn your eyes to try to look at who is better, who, uh, who um, is getting better blessings than I, it could be very difficult. We see Abraham being called on a journey in Genesis chapter 12. He was called, but he was not told where he was going. He was not told how difficult it would be what kind of dangers he will face, what good things he will encounter on his journey, how long the journey will take and how far. God just told him, come out of your family, come out of your clan, to a journey I will show you. Everyone is called on such a journey. It may not be evident, but it's true. We are always, we are on a journey. And... I would like us to um, focus on a journey 
of, of Joseph. We all know Joseph. Joseph had a difficult, painful beginning. He lost a mother while very young. He grew up in a polygamous family. Those who know it, you know what can happen in there. We see it from the brothers who were jealousy and, and were, um, were rough with him. They planned killing him, but he was sold into slavery, which could have been even worse than being killed. He went into slavery, accused of a very terrible crime, thrown into prison again, forgotten while in prison. What I see from Joseph, he accepted his lot. This was a person going from one pain into another. And what I see is that wherever he was casted, he thrived. And one of the statements that encourages me after every pain he went through, it was said, and the Lord was with Joseph. Looking at his acceptance of the situation and thriving in the worst of the situations reveals that he possessed something divine. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Could it be that sometimes he sat down and cried about his situation and thought about the mother, the wickedness of the brothers? Thinking about his little brother, you know? He's like, if I was sold and they wanted to kill me, what about my little brother back home? You know, what is happening to him? I know he would sit down and weep. But the end of the story shows that he walked his journey with peace. Because when later on he met with the brothers and they were reconciling, he made a statement and said, whatever you did, God used it, and it was a blessing, and this is where we are. For my conclusion, Joseph walked his journey with peace. He accepted his Lord. He knew this is it. But as long as God is with me, I will walk the journey. I would like us to look at two prophets in the Old Testament, Elijah and Elisha. Elijah, a very courageous prophet, he wasn't afraid of any face. He commanded that the heavens shut up and there was no rain for three good years. He raised the widow's son. He made sure that there was oil and flour through um, his prayer to God. He commanded fire from heaven to devour the sacrifice. He prayed again intensely and the rain came back. He gave judgments to the king and his household. And at the end of his journey, he was taken to heaven. But I know as he was called on his journey, he never knew how it's going to end because there wasn't any promise that you will go to heaven. He was always on the run. He was in the caves. He was running away from those who were persecuting him. And at the end, he was taken to heaven. And that was his journey. We look at Elisha, who became the heir of Elijah. He got a double portion of the spirit of Elijah. And it was said that he's one of the prophets who did greatest of all miracles in the Old Testament, a very powerful prophet who healed Naaman, who opened the eyes of the servant that he was able to see angels with chariots of fire ready to protect them, who protected the city from the Assyrians. He did a lot. However, his ending was different from Elijah's ending. With all that power, he became ill. And 
despite being ill, he even did miracles on his deathbed. What if Elijah, Elisha compared his journey with Elijah? Would it have brought peace in his life? He would have asked questions like, why do I have to die? And Elijah goes to heaven. When you read Elijah's story, you don't see any kind of faltering. But if you look at Elijah, after doing that powerful miracle, and then he was threatened by a woman, he ran away and even wanted to die. It's like he, he's like, I don't think God can protect me. I don't think I can manage. Like he distrusted God. Isaiah 55 from verse 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are, your, are my ways higher than your ways, and your thoughts than your thoughts. God made the decision. And the Bible says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. When God calls, on, calls you on a journey, it is him to direct you. It is him to tell you where to go, what to do, how the ending will be. And it is up to you to accept it. And the truth is that pain and suffering can be part of the journey. And he can allow it to happen. But we have to remember that it is God who sees what is needful and best for us. So we walk our journey with peace. If you look at Elisha lying down on his bed and also continuing to do miracles, have you been in a situation where you're praying for others and they're getting what they want and they're succeeding and yokes are broken and diseases are healed and then when you pray for yourself, nothing is moving, you know, nothing is happening. And you ask yourself, what have I done wrong? How come that the Lord hears the prayers that I pray for the others, and then my prayers are not answered? It can be very difficult on your journey. But looking at Elisha, he had peace. He trusted God. He trusted the guiding of God that even if he died... He was looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of his faith. There are times it seems that God has given more blessings to others, and to others he gives peanuts. Where sometimes he seems to play favorite and withholds some things from others, and to others, he gives abundantly. And sometimes we can think that he is unfair. Who has ever thought in his life that God is unfair? <laughs> okay, I have two or three companies. There are times you think that God is unfair because of how things are playing out. But when we remember that he knows us, if you look, uh, if you read about Jeremiah, he said, I knew you before you were born. The Lord who knows the end from the beginning, you know, if God can, can tell us what is going to happen thousands of years, can he not tell what is going to happen in the period of one to a hundred years? Because it, it's not easy to go up to a hundred. We are always in between there. Don't you think he is capable of knowing what is going to happen. Trusting God on your journey is the most important thing. Let's look at Jesus and John the Baptist. John the Baptist was born of Elizabeth and I've forgotten his father. <laughs> but they were quite old as they got this boy 
and both of them were miraculous children. And it was prophesied that John should be the forerunner of Jesus. And if you look at that position, I think it would have been a position of, of privilege as a forerunner of a savior, a mighty king, the prince of peace, the majesty of heaven. I think it would have been something that is of splendor. But it was different because the Bible describes him as someone who is in the desert, crying out in the desert, making a way for the king, always dressed in funny clothes, eating locusts as his meal. And John the Baptist accepted his Lord. And he did his work mightily. But the question is, could John the Baptist ever think that he would end up in a prison, in a dark prison, with all the power he had, with all the authority from the heaven that he had, and also the pronunciation that he was the forerunner of Christ? Unfortunately, it was that. And when he sent the disciples to ask Jesus whether um, they should wait for another, Jesus never gave him the answer he expected. Are there times that we walk our journeys and have questions, and God does not give us the answers that we need to hear? And yet John the Baptist accepted the response, whatever it was, and he was beheaded. He walked his journey with peace because the answer that he received, you don't hear about him again complaining about anything. But also think about Elizabeth in, his, in her old age, giving birth to his only child and son, knowing that this son is going to be powerful, he's going to be the forerunner of the majesty of heaven, and then his son ends up in the prison. He's not rescued from the prison, yet Jesus was doing miracles. And then he's beheaded. I want you to think about what would go through the minds of these parents. It was hard getting a child, and the child is God, and that's the end of the child. We should always come to trust God, whatever the situation. On our journeys, the most important thing is knowing who God is in your life. That is very important. When you know who is guiding you, when you know who is with you, when you know that he alone has better plans for you, you will walk your journey with peace. You look to Jesus. He comes, he's pronounced that he's going to be the savior of the universe. As he was born, the angels sang. He did a lot of miracles. But the Bible also describes him as a man of sorrows. He didn't have where to sleep. He said, foxes have their places, but the Son of Man has nowhere to put his head. Do we sometimes identify with that kind of Jesus? You know, he walked his journey. If you look at him in Gethsemane when he says, Father, if, if your will be done, take away this cup. Are there times we come to that point on our journeys when we're like, God, this is too much. I can't hold it any longer. I can't take it anymore. You come from one, you know, you come from the, a hot frying pan and then you fall into fire. Does that happen in your life or have you seen someone where such is happening? Yes. The journey where God leads may lie through the flood of flame, but it is the safest. Remember Naomi. Remember her story. Having children, a good husband, a famine happens, and they run just like it happens to us 
their economic migrants, they go somewhere, but with hopes that things will be better. And then where he goes, it is one trouble after the other. The husband dies, the first son dies, the second son dies. And he's, she's aged, left with two widow, uh, widows. And she tells them, you know what? My pain is enough. You go back to your families. I can't hold it anymore. But God gives her a consolation of Ruth. And Ruth stayed with her. like, I will not leave you. You know? And then through Ruth, we see that Jesus also came in her roads. But she accepted her lot. That was her lot. That was her life. You know, we are living in a world that is beautiful, but again strange. Where today things can be blossoming, can be beautiful, and in the next moment it can be different. No one knows what will happen in between. There are times even we make plans and they are clear we have made plans. And we, we have, they are so strategic and we are sure things are going to work out. And things can turn out differently. But what we have to know, that God is leading. And with my experience... The one thing I pray much about is the peace of God. Because when you have the peace of God, whatever comes your way, just as we sang the song that when peace like a river comes my way, or when sorrows like sea billows roll, that whatever my Lord, thou hast taught me to say, that it is well with my soul. Whatever, my Lord. God can choose to give you blessings of different kinds. He can also let you go through pain and suffering. Does he change? No, he doesn't change. He is bidding us not to be anxious about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition to present our requests to the Lord. There are some important things on our journey that I would like to encourage you to keep for yourself. God knows the way forward because he is the way, the truth, and the life. When you don't know what next, God knows what next. He knows how the end will be. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted in all the earth. Do not be anxious about anything. John 14, 1 to 2 says, let not your hearts be troubled, believe in God, and also believe in me. As you walk on that journey, you have to believe God, and you have to believe Jesus. Isaiah 41, verse 9 to 10, is a very powerful scripture that guides my life. It says, do not fear, I am with you. Do not be dismayed, I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The Lord is sure to be with you on your journey. You know, when you're anxious, it makes it worse. The devil loves a mind that is unstable. The moment he sees that you're anxious. He's going to bring in all sorts of things in your head. But when things go wrong, I encourage you to seek the peace of God. 
And in the midst of peace, you will see the hand of God. Things may not turn the way you want to be, but I tell you the peace of God that passes all understanding will comfort and strengthen your life. As you walk on your journey, do not be tempted to take on or assume the position of God. You know, sometimes we feel wiser than God. We think we have better ideas and we think we can manage our situations better. We know who God is. We know that he's all wise. We know that he knows the end from the beginning. He's omnipotent. He's, he's all that we need. He's our defense. He's our rock. He's our salvation. When you face those storms of your life, do not assume his position. Let him be God. Always remember you are not alone. There are times you go through tribulations and you feel you're the only one facing challenges. You're the only one facing that pain. You're the only one going through it. Jesus said he will never leave you nor forsake you. And always know that there are other Christians who are going through what you're going through. Peter wrote about that. So let no challenge put you in a corner to tell you you are alone. When you go through it, remember that there are other people on their journeys who are facing it rough. But the promise of God says, you will not be forgotten by me. When you're walking your journey and you do not understand, it's okay. You don't need to know everything going on. The difference between this journey and other journeys, other journeys, you, always, you, you know where you're going, you have the road, you know, but the journey of life is complicated. But leaving God to guide you and instruct you is the best way. Never compare yourself with someone else as you walk on your journey. I know all of us have been on the German highway, you know, where there are three lanes or four lanes or six lanes. And the worst mistake is to drive looking into another lane. It can be dangerous because you will either be knocked or you will knock. You have to look to your lane. You know, Jesus said, carry your cross and follow me. On our journey, there are crosses that we will carry. But the Lord is our help. God knew you before you were and designed a path for your life that is unique and distinct. God is not the author of suffering, but he may allow pain and trouble along the journey. There is nothing in your life that shocks God. There is nothing that makes him sit and wonder, what can I do for my child? Let's learn to depend on God. I would like to give you Psalm 121 as we wind up. I could imagine the person who wrote this was standing somewhere in the valley not knowing what will happen. And he says, when I look up the hills, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and the earth. So as you walk your journey and you are in a valley or you're climbing a mountain that is too steep or you're crossing a rushing river, your help comes from the Lord. Always seek the peace of God and learn to accept your Lord because he who created you, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Walk your journey with peace. God bless you. Amen. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we bless you and worship you. We want to thank you for encouraging us. 
because sometimes we feel it's all us who are going through pain. And we feel it should be better. Sometimes the journey can be rough and we do not know where to turn to and we lose the peace of God. But I pray, dear Lord, that you may return the peace in the lives of your children. I pray that the peace of God that passes all understanding will follow each child on their journey. Because where there is peace, there is calmness, there is comfort, there is joy. Where there is peace, life is worth a living. Let us trust you. Looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Knowing that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Knowing that you have plans for each one of us. You have better plans. Give us grace that we may only look to you, not to what other people are going through. Give us the courage to face our Lord. And give us the faith to believe that you move mountains. To believe that you calm storms. To believe that there is nothing above your authority. That you rule the universe. That whatever our Lord, you are in control. As we depart, Lord, may your blessings depart with us. May we depart with the Holy Spirit. May we depart with joy and peace. May we face the world with courage, knowing because you live, we can face tomorrow, and life is worth living. Thank you, Jesus, for being so good. In thy holy name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Let us all stand and sing song number 623. I will follow thee, my Savior. Oh 
Jesus, it is good to go with you. Thank you that you plant the hope in our heart. Life is not every time on the high, but even we are in a deep valley, you go with us. Thank you that you can give us peace in every situation. May you always be joyful in the union with the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Show a gentle attitude toward everyone. The Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything, but in all your prayers, ask God for what you need. Always ask him with a thankful heart. And God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe in union with Christ Jesus. Amen. Good job. 